I'm gonna give you the full picture. Everything I bought this season, where it's from, how much it costed, a complete full picture of my wardrobe and how I got it, what I spent on it. When we think of the way we used to shop, that we used to be more proactive about seeing how much money we had in the budget, um, figuring out what kind of things we wanted and then going to our local store and whenever there was an overlap of something at our local store and the price we could pay and it was what we were looking for, we bought that. That was how we used to shop, pre-social media, blogs, all of that. Now, the way we shop with all those blogs and stuff is a lot more reactionary. That we follow people, we see glimpses of their wardrobe, we see a piece that looks really cool and then they tag the brand and it's this new brand we've never heard of before. And we react by Deciding what we buy is often based off the decisions other people made. That we will shop from new brands, we will um, look for certain kinds of pieces, that exact piece or dupe of it, based on other people's wardrobes. And there is an issue with that way we shop where we use other people's wardrobes to help decide our own. And that issue is that there is an information gap, that we don't have the complete picture we see the new pieces they post every week every day every month whatever it is we see the brands they shop at but we don't have the actual information of that wardrobe of how much it costed if we can afford to have all the clothes they have we don't know how much they paid for it and we don't know what those numbers are compared to the rest of their life what those numbers mean to them so we have all this inspiration that is consciously or unconsciously helping us decide what we're supposed to have for ourselves, the kinds of pieces, the amount of pieces. And then there's that kind of added layer on top that with all the influencers and bloggers and YouTubers we follow, a lot of them are given the clothes for free or they're paid by the brand to shop there or they're paid to show it to you. And then every time you buy it, they get a commission and get money. But whatever it is, this wardrobe that they have for the price they get it for isn't available to you. So we can use wardrobes that aren't even something we could have to help us feel like that's what we should have. And then another thing I see going on a lot now is this, I'm going to say abuse of the word budget, that there are all these hauls and uh, things labeled about like budget shopping and budget outfits and budget haul, which is just people buying a bunch of cheap clothes all at once, when really that's not what it means to shop on a budget. It means you shop purposefully and intentionally and you prioritize only a few items that you need the most and you buy a version of it that's gonna last you. It's not I buy 20 pieces at once from one store in one afternoon. That's not actually shopping on a budget and I think we lost that. And I also think that a lot of influencers and style bloggers, and I think I feel like I've done this in the past too, are somewhat misleading their audience and maybe even themselves in terms of how much they're actually spending on clothes that they try to dismiss it and wave it off as like, oh, I hardly shop and I hardly buy anything. But showing five new pieces on your Instagram feed each month is actually spending a lot by some standards on clothes. That it is, it does become a significant number very fast. So all of that is why I wanted to make this video that I'm excited slash nervous to share. Not because I think that my numbers are the right ones, not because I think that I'm doing it correctly and you should spend what I'm spending, not at all, but just because we are pressured and we have so much influence in our style, all based off these incomplete sets of information. So I want to give you at least one person's complete set of information so that if you do compare yourself to my wardrobe, if you do feel like what I, sh what I wear on my Instagram is something that influences you, at least you have the full picture so that you're actually able to compare and make 
wise, thoughtful decisions for yourself. So I guess that's the intro. Let's get into it. Some, some context for me and how I shop is that in this video, I'm showing you everything I bought this year for my spring slash summer wardrobe. This includes shoes. This includes accessories. This includes jewelry. It does not include makeup and beauty things. It does not include the price of tailoring, which I get some of my pieces tailored. It does not include um, peripheral stuff like haircuts and, and all of that. But it does include all the like taxes and shipping fees that I've paid. It does include literally everything, I think. The way I found this information is I combed through my closet, I combed through my uh, credit card receipts, and I made sure that I was actually accounting for everything and not forgetting about anything. So I really think this is a complete picture. And the way I shop is that in February of this year, I stopped buying winter clothes, I stopped buying sweaters and boots or whatever, and I switched to only buying things that I'll wear in the spring and summer. And then in August, which is the month it is now when I'm recording this, I switched to fall winter where now I'm not gonna buy any swimsuits or, or summer clothes. I'm only gonna buy things that I'll get a lot of use out in the fall and winter. So my shopping season that you're seeing this video is from February until the end of July. And it is all stuff I bought that I plan to wear in the spring and summer, taxes and shipping included, rounding to the nearest dollar for simplicity's sake, okay? So that's the context, and let's go through everything I bought for my spring summer wardrobe. And these are in no particular order other than the order I found them in, whether in my closet or on my credit card receipt, so we're just going to do them in this random order. Item number one, this pair of jeans. It is from a local store here. They are Rolas. They are $158. Two Reformation dresses, which I love Reformation. It's probably my favorite brand. It's sustainable, made in California, but it's very expensive, especially if you're importing it to Canada with 30% duties. So these two dresses, I love them, and I was able to get them from someone who was in the States, so I didn't actually have to pay that shipping and duties, so I was able to get them for $4.43. Uh, two Cotton Urban Outfitters t-shirts, $48 for both of them. This skirt and top combo that I wear together and I wear apart, it is from Topshop and it was $102. Um, I, this pant and top kind of loungewear slash I wear it out set from Mango, $90. Two semi-stylish lounge pants, H&M and Topshop, they were $22 and $32 respectively. Um, two suits, they were each a great 30% off sale from Mango, so they were both $160 each. Um, one pair of shorts, also from Mango, $47. This vintage robe I got at a flea market, $15. One pair of sandals, Mango, $150. Two necklaces, the first from Missouri, $163, and the second from Wolf Circus, $87 and one pair of sunglasses. They are matte and matte and they were $73. So if you had your little calculator out, you probably got to my total of $1,750 and that is what I spent on clothes from February to the end of July, past six months. That is my entire spring and summer collection for this year. If you divide that to a monthly number, which is often how I think of clothes and budgets, you get $2.92 a month. So that is the average as what I'm spending on clothes right now. So for me, because I think we need to ground this number in context, for me, that is about five to 8% of my monthly income after taxes. It is uh, a lot more than I spend on something like transportation, which is pretty much free in the spring and summer because I bike everywhere. I spend a lot on rent. I spend a lot on food. Those are my two big expenses that are a lot more than I spend on clothes. And then the amount I spend on clothes is actually pretty similar to like my entertainment budget of what I spend on like social events and drinking a glass of wine, going out dancing, that kind of thing. And if you were kind of mentally following along with that list, you might have noticed that there were things I just 
did not buy. I didn't buy a single purse spring and summer. I didn't buy like a spring jacket. I didn't buy a swimsuit this year. I didn't buy a beach hat. That there were just groups of categories that I put no check marks in this season. And then there were a lot of things I only bought one of, even though we're often told we're supposed to have more than one of them. That I only bought one pair of shorts. I only bought one skirt. I only bought um, one pair of sunglasses and one pair of summer sandals. And to deepen this picture, what enables me to spend this much on clothes and buy the pieces I buy? Um, one is an, a certain degree of wealth and privilege that I, I can spend that much of my budget on clothes that I don't have any dependents, I don't have any kids or, or pets or parents that I need to support. Um, a second thing that makes it really easy for me is that I just have one wardrobe, one wardrobe for casual, one wardrobe for work, one wardrobe for fancy weddings, and I just mix and match the pieces differently because that's what my lifestyle allows and that's what I do with my style. I also have been building my style and shopping really purposefully with clarity about what I like for years now. That means that even though I only bought less than 20 pieces, I have like so much more than that that I have access to and love to wear because it's built up over the last three, four, five spring and summers. I also understand fabric and construction really well, which enables me to buy pieces that last. And what else is helping me? I live in Toronto, which means that although I pay a lot more for goods than you would, especially in, in Canada and Ontario, I pay a lot more for goods and taxes and imports than you would if you lived in the US. But what I recognize is that living in Toronto has so much access to different styles I like, a lot of places ship here, and that there's just so much that I can get here versus if you live in a more remote place where there might only be a couple local stores and then they don't carry stuff that you like, so everything is expensive to get imported. So there we have it, my phone numbers. I really try to be as correct and honest and transparent as possible. I don't think I left anything out and I want and hope that you respect that, that you respect the transparency and honesty I shared this with and don't judge my decisions. And I also don't want you to do anything with this information, that this isn't about you then spending exactly what I spent or the exact percentage of your income that I spent or buying the pieces that I bought. It's not about any of that. It's just about helping to give you one full picture so that maybe the next time you look at someone else's wardrobe and you compare your wardrobe to that and you want what they have, you remember everything else that you don't know about them. And you're not letting yourself hold yourself up to a standard that you actually don't have complete information around. And if this is our first time hanging out, hi, you're welcome for the TMI. My name is Rebecca Jacobs. I'm a style expert teaching style strategies for better outfits, easier, more purposeful shopping, and just like overall feel good, joyful style. If you appreciated this video and the transparency, I'd love for you to let me know with a thumbs up and in the comments below. And if you want an even deeper transparent look into my style, come join me on Instagram. I share what I'm wearing every day over there so you get to see how these pieces mix and match, how often I'm truly repeating stuff and all the pieces I'm wearing that I've had for years. So you can get a really good full picture of one person's style on their own unique budget and taste, but hopefully it's helpful to you. So please join me. I'm at Rebecca.Jacobs and I hope to connect with you there. Talk soon. I'm trying them on now and since it's time of year for shopping, I thought this might be helpful if I brought you along. If I wasn't prompted to get dressed differently, 